Let's talk about how to pick firewood trees from your woods. Wood is good. Heating your home with wood from your land is a cheap and sustainable way to stay warm in the winter. But will you destroy your property if you cut trees on it? No. If you're careful with which trees you cut, you can actually improve your woods by growing larger, healthier trees that better resist damage from insects and storms, produce more valuable timber, and provide more food and shelter for wildlife. You also don't need a lot of land to sustainably grow your own firewood. In New York State, for instance, 12 acres of trees will grow enough firewood to heat your home year after year. That's about the size of two large discount stores. And if you're only using firewood as a secondary heat, like in a fireplace, you won't even need that much. But what trees should you cut? Lots of species make good firewood, but in general you should cut hardwoods. What are hardwoods? Basically, hardwoods are trees that don't have needles. Maple, oak, cherry, hickory, ash, beech, and hop hornbeam are all good firewood choices. So we know which species to look for. But which of those trees should you cut? To start, look for trees about 4 to 10 inches across. Also, look for trees that have signs of disease or poor health. Look for these indicators, cankers, crown dieback, or a crooked trunk. In particular, cut these trees when their crowns are touching the crowns of healthy, more valuable trees. Doing this will give your healthier trees more room to grow bigger and faster. That helps make your woods more valuable. But it isn't just about money. You can also use firewood cutting to support wildlife. Leaving healthy oaks, hickories, and cherries, for instance, lets these trees produce more fruit and nuts that animals love. Now there are a few trees you should avoid cutting for firewood. Number one, dead trees. If you're going to burn a tree, you might think it makes sense to use a dead one rather than one that's still alive. But there are two problems with using dead trees for firewood. Dead trees often have rot and won't burn well. They're also very important to wildlife. Dead trees, whether standing or fallen, provide unique nesting spots and tasty insects. Number two, trees with needles. Softwoods like pine, spruce, and hemlock burn too quickly so the heat doesn't last. They also make a lot of sap and creosote that can cause chimney fires. If you live in a place that only has trees with needles, you may have to use them, but avoid them if you can. Number three, large, straight, healthy trees. At first glance, these trees seem great for firewood because you'll need to cut fewer of them and they're easier to split. You might also think that by cutting them, you're making room for the smaller trees to grow. But these big trees are actually the ones you should save and give more space. Keeping them will give you more money if you later decide to log your property. And they'll also provide wildlife with more food and shelter. So to review, cutting firewood from your land is a cheap, sustainable way to heat your home and make your woods healthier. Avoid dead trees and trees with needles. Cut live hardwoods instead. And cut smaller trees that are in poor health and competing with your larger, healthier trees. Following these tips when picking your firewood trees will help your woods resist damage from insects and storms, produce more valuable timber, and attract more wildlife to your property. But wait! Before you head out and start cutting, consider these next steps. First, make sure you have good personal protective equipment like logging chaps and a face mask. Then attend a chainsaw safety course to learn techniques for safer felling.